What's up, though? This is Ami with the Real Visual Outlet. As always, we have So So here beside me. Um, today we have a special guest. What up, though? It's your boy Turn Up. All right, Turn, turn Up. up. <laughs> Follow me on social media at Turn Up on the Film. And I'm from Detroit, downtown, you know, a couple, right. couple blocks away. Okay, all right. So, so uh, Turn Up, where you get that from? I started off with Big T, was my rap name. And then, like, my friend was calling me, like, Mr. Turn It Up, because his name was Mr. And I was like, bro, you should collab this name together. So, be, like, everybody call you Mr., but it's like, Turn It Up. Mm -hmm. So, we went with it. So, every song was like, Mr. Turn It Up, Mr. Turn It Up. Everybody like, why you keep shouting them out in every song? I'm like, we trying to collab, we doing something, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So, you so, be turning up? Yeah. So, okay. But recently, they, everybody just kept calling me Turn Up. Everybody would take the Mr. part off and just call me Turn Up. So, then I just changed it to Turn Up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are you a man of all trades. You do photography, you do management, you do videos, movies, mm -hmm. you do music, directing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So so what got you into kind of like all of that creative work? Well I started off rapping first. I didn't really do nothing else much. So I was pretty much was just rapping, making beats every day after school and then from there I just started filming. And doing photos because I would always do some photos on my phone, mm -hmm. just taking pictures of outside buildings and stuff like that. And then I started doing music videos. And then as I got older, I started buying cameras and watching YouTube tutorials and just following people that do videos and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what? How does that shape you as a you know a creative you know now? Like how did that shape you? Just you know taking all of that and you know putting it into one big loop that you have now. It made me feel good. Cause I'm, I'm like, my mama came and seen my movie in theaters, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know what I'm saying? I be tagging her on Facebook like, my your son, a <laughs> film director, how you feel about that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it, it feel good, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I ain't where I want to be, but I'm still growing. But you know right. what I'm saying? It feel good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like, hey, my movie was in theaters. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. you know. so is that the movie that you're referring to? Is that the Betrayal movie? Yeah, we had Betrayal 1 and Betrayal 2. Mm -hmm. And then now we're working on, uh, I think it's called Flaturated. Okay. I don't know if I get the name right. Listen, to know what it is, so right, she might right. kill me if I get it yeah. wrong. I mean, we just well, didn't do it yesterday. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're working on that. And then uh, she said she's going to push Betrayal 3 back. For probably a year or two, just mm -hmm. to let this other movie do its thing, right. and then besides that, I'm working on uh, two other movies: one ways in, two ways out, with my uh, business partner Tia. Mm -hmm. She do the Detroit plug, so you always see me in the Detroit plugs. I'm a sponsored yeah, artist, yeah. and then we got a uh, hunting season with one of my artists, Made Man. It's a movie he written. I'm just helping directing it, mm -hmm. putting it in theaters, and then I got one more movie called uh, Red Dead by my boy Zach. Okay. So, I'm okay. trying to get into this movie game. Can you give, so, give us a little sneak peek of, or insight on you know the films that you do have, you know that you're co collaborating with? Um, I know with uh, with Lucy, the movie she got coming out now, it's like a love tale almost. It's like y'all seen the movie, the Beyonce movie, Obsessed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like that. It's oh, kind of, wow. it's kind of, it's kind of like you know, fell in love a little bit. And he like, I'm just trying to do me now. She's like, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a little, it's a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And then in one way, two ways out. It's basically a typical Detroit movie, you know. Father put the boyfriend, his uh, daughter boyfriend on to sell some drugs. And uh, he tried to play everybody else on. And then, you know what I'm saying? It started to crumble. Because, you know, people see you elevate. Mm -hmm. And, you know what I'm saying? They're like, man, I can do that too. I can do it better. And so, you know, that's how that goes. And then in hunting season, we 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 took the regular dope game, but we kind of made it towards like a mafia type in the movie. Mm -hmm. So it's like my crew was called Chops. So my name is Chops, and then my little brother Till Moon, that his name is Little Chops. And we basically the people that come clean up, or you need us to go hit somebody that you don't want your name on it. Mm -hmm. We do that. Mm -hmm. And so it's like different levels, different crews in there, but it's like a mafia type. So, mm -hmm. but the basics behind that is basically uh, Mayman Ghost, his crew, his little brother name is, uh, I think it's Dino. He hit the wrong person when they was doing the plug deal. Mm -hmm. And then everything that's seen it backfire from there. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. 
So I seen that you, I heard you just say that you're going to be in um, one of those movies, and I did see you in the Betrayal 2 movie, mm -hmm. you know, briefly in the beginning. So are you trying to act as well, too? Trying to get into the acting game? Oh, yeah, I do. I do a little something. I do a little something. <laughs> We 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 uh was had another scene in there with me because I uh we did two scenes with me running from the cops, mm -hmm. so hopefully in Michelle three, mm -hmm. I'm in there right. got more lines. <laughs> but in Hundred Seeds, I'm like one of the main characters, okay. and one ways two ways out. I got I say about a couple of scenes in there, okay. and then um, it's this another movie. It's a uh, his name is Mo Rilla. He got a movie called this uh Deceptive Family. Mm -hmm. So I had a full, full little main character role in that too. So I'm just waiting for him to get back in production. Mm -hmm. so. so how do you like being in front, in front of the camera? I don't really like it. You don't? Oh, I'm behind the scenes. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. You got to shoot the music videos. I'm, I'm like, I'm like a P Diddy person. I just want to be there once in a while, right. so you know, like, oh, T can still is, do yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, I want to pop in and out. Like, oh, T, I didn't know you had that. Like, yeah. <laughs> So you like to get behind the scenes. Yeah, because I like to put the work down. I want to make sure the coloring right, right, every angle, everything. So that's why I like, I watch a lot of people's videos and try to work with a lot of people because mm -hmm. I don't know everything. Everything I learned was offhand. Mm -hmm. I went to school for it and everything, but they can't teach something, you know what I'm saying? That's yeah, you. Hands on. Yeah, exactly. yeah, hands on. So what was your first movie that you did? Was it the Betrayal movie or was this one before that? Oh no! Nah, it was uh well we had a movie in production. It was called uh um premeditated murder. Ghost had written it, but we didn't never get a chance to film it because we were trying to get money and stuff together. So Lucy movie is the actual first movie I started helping direct and yeah. everything and shot with her. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for those of us that don't know what it's like shooting and then editing a full movie, can you elaborate a little bit on what that's like? Man, Lucy almost died. What you mean I, almost died? I was about to strangle Lucy. <laughs> Lucy my right hand, but she almost got strangled. Oh, wow. I was like, I was being one of the picky directors, but hey, if you ain't bringing no Skittles every time we <laughs> every time we edit, I ain't editing. <laughs> so, Skittles? Um, oh. Yeah, Lucy, like Lucy motivates me because she like, she wants stuff to be done, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm there. And I'm like, I got her as we go on. I'm like, hey, we should switch this to do this, this to do that. And so it was like, We'll edit, pick a time to edit from 2 o'clock. It'll be like end at 8 and end up being there to 2 a.m. So it was like we'll edit every single day, all day. Mm. Um, putting in work. Putting putting in work. In work. Yeah. So how long was the editing process for those movies? We edited about, i say, the first one, I didn't think it took that long because I just mostly shot it and then my boy Neo edited it. So I got to relax on the first one song. Okay. So, but like the second one, that was like, I want to say almost three months edited that. Because mm. so, it's like, you got to get the color right. You got to get everybody music. You got to get the approval for the music. You got to get, uh, it's called movie scores, a little sound effects and everything. And then we like had like at least four scenes that we didn't film. Okay. So we had to add, go back and add that. And then you have to cut the, uh, cut the, uh, film, the frames. And move them aside, put that frame in, re-edit, recolor. So it was like a wow. lot. So what challenges did you come across, you know, while shooting the movie? Um if if there was any. I mean, but mainly it was keeping that energy. Okay. Cause it's like, you know, you I don't really work nine to fives because I believe in my career. So I'm trying to push it further you know what i'm saying like it's cool to have nine to five and work in your career but i'm that guy that's like hey I'm not, i don't want to do a nine to five because that's just gonna make me work. yeah so it's like pushing day in and just all day we filming here filming here okay the weekends we relax but the next day we got to edit mm -hmm. so like the only only focus was like energy you know because you're trying to stay focused because it's a long process like we did i say about a year to mm -hmm. film and everything and then people schedule and timing yeah. so and then when we on scene it's a couple of bloopers because we, we silly at the same time so mm -hmm. it's like going through all that and all that so mm -hmm. basically the only challenge we really came to was like being focused a little bit and that was it but other than that it was pretty much everything was straight so like from a director's view uh can you give us any interesting details from behind the scene 
man, behind the scene is where it's at. Like that's, that's why I like to be behind the scene because I get to see other people do them and mess up and I get to laugh at them. You know what I'm saying? So it was like when me and Lucy was filming, me and her laughed the most because, you know what I'm saying, she a silly person be trying to do her and it just be hilarious. And then like also behind the scene, it's like, you know what I'm saying, that moment you get to see production-wise, like when we put it on Instagram or be Facebook Live, and it's like you get to see what all goes on, the light and the mics and everything. Like all we really had for both movies was an iPhone, a mic, and some stabilizer, mm -hmm. and we we made it happen. Right. So, but mm -hmm. now we now we doing with cameras, but that iPhone, like I see why some directors be using. They phone with certain events because it's, it's clear, it's dope, and get that HD look and everything. Wow. So, like, behind the scenes, it's really, it's really where it's at. I like it. Okay. So, how do you think you've grown, you know, from doing the first Betrayal movie and then now you shot the second Betrayal movie? Like, what have you learned from, from doing both? Um, pretty much, I'm going to say angles. Like, mm -hmm. angles, coloring. And like making sure people stick to their line because sometimes it's hard to edit and people lines ain't always together. Mm -hmm. So you, sometimes I would have to put like a audio transition in between to try to either match it up or have it skip through a, a word just to make it go straight together. Mm -hmm. Because nine times out of ten, everybody's lines ain't going to be the same line that they said the first time. Right. So I try to get as close as possible. So, but other than that, that's really, really the main, the main thing. So aside from the movies, you know, that you said earlier in the interview that you have coming up that you'll be um, shooting, um, is there anything in music that's coming up? Um, anything that you want to let the viewers know about the artists that you're managing, mm -hmm. things like that? Um, we got the, uh, what I just dropped? I dropped Turn Those World Volume 2. I got the Beyond Global mix. That Beyond Global is my record label. You know, you can go on uh, Instagram, go to BG Management Team, or go to YouTube. It's Beyond underscore Global. And I got about a couple of good artists. I got uh, my cousin. His name is Eastwood. He 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 beats. You know what I'm saying? I think T Grizzly Cole. I got to hear my cousin. So I done had him on like 107.5 shows. Uh, he did a couple shows with this uh, label group called CSE Music Group. It's a, uh, they kind of they not technically signed, but get uh, mm, the Bilston or whatever under like Sony Records and them. So I have them do shows with that. Uh, my other artist is called Ghost. His main man Ghost, the one that's doing the movie. He he a good rapper. He he's dope. Like you ever have a song from a friend that you hear that make you cry? Mm -hmm. Like he's one of them type of rappers. Like he's a storyteller rapper. That like it's your pain, but I feel your pain. Mm -hmm. And I ain't been through it, but. I feel it. So he one of them type rappers. Then he got a group called Made Man the Movement, which consists of his brother Trey, his cousin Los, and his wife Hope. And so all them rap and the wife she sings. So like all that together, they they really be putting together true amazing songs. Sound like y'all Motown over there. Right. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> believe. That's believe. You gotta hear the music. You gotta hear it. Mm -hmm. And then we got my wife, a uh, cousin. Her name is uh, Diamond Marie. She sings. Okay. So she um, 17, but I'm getting her together. She kind of shy, but mm -hmm. she got an amazing voice. Okay. Um, and then my, uh, I got my little bro, Tell Moon, the one that's in the movie with me. Mm -hmm. Now, if y'all, y'all got to hear Tell Moon. Like Tell Moon, they can sing. And be like, why well, sound like you already pre-recorded mm -hmm. with a little auto tune on your voice? Like when he sings, it's like whoa, mm -hmm. that's amazing. And then he got his own group called Go Gang, mm -hmm. so he got his own producers and artists as well. Mm -hmm. so. Now, are you looking to use any of the artists that you have, like you know, in your movies for soundtracks yeah. and things like that too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I mean, I don't want. I don't want to say like just our, just my main artist in there. I look for everybody else's music too. But when you first do something like, okay, we're just gonna use this music, this music. Then when people come on, we gonna use it because that's how we did like a Lucy movie. Lucy used her music, and then you know what I'm saying had other people bring their music in. So we had Rocky Bad music. We had my boy Beezy music. We had my boy Gary music. Uh, Lavish Colion. 
and we have more of the artists. Mm -hmm. But when you first start shooting, you just gonna be like, all right, I wanna add this song because the song fit for it. And then when people start to bring their music in too, you're like, all right, cool, we got a place for your music. Mm -hmm. so. so, you know, I'm just curious, you're a manager, all these things, like how do you mm -hmm. balance that? You know what I'm saying? Like on a day to day, you know, like are you- It's a struggle. It's a struggle. Like it's a struggle, like, like I just came from, doing a, a concert last night with Dame Dash mm -hmm. and to do a, a coming to work and I work part-time right now doing security because I'm trying to upgrade my equipment and stuff mm -hmm. so I just went from that event straight to work with no sleep and then straight here and then after I leave here I had to meet up with Shane we filming something and then meet up with Lucy mm -hmm. so like it's, it's, it's a struggle like every day is either just editing all day or it's meeting up filming brainstorming some things or in the studio so it's like it's kind of a non-stop thing but i say i say in between i get a little moment to myself mm -hmm. but that's mainly it like mm -hmm. the camera don't never stop put down because my wife do photos and she always trying to take photos 24 7 so mm -hmm. so it's yeah. a movie every day yeah but you know putting in all that work it's, it's gonna pay off for you know, it's mm -hmm. not pay off. already got these movies coming out and everything so Definitely, yeah. I can see it happening for you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm just, I'm just waiting for Tyler Perry to knock out my dome. <laughs> DJ Cali, somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Said I'm good, yeah, I'm good, yeah, I'm good. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, yeah, I'm good. Said I'm good, yeah, I'm good, yeah, I'm good. Thank the man, thank the man up high. Said I'm good, yeah, I'm good.